Hello and welcome to my porch. My name is Roy. I am a home cook and amateur baker and I am here on this channel typically sharing recipes that have helped me to lose over 125 pounds whether those recipes are mine or someone else's. But today you can see I'm on the porch and this time it does mean Tag Tuesday. These questions were created by Sandy over at Let's Get Fit with Sandy and I was tagged, as I always am, by the lovely Kim over at A Girl and Her Phone. Thank you, Kim, for tagging me once again. And thank you, Sandy, for coming up with these questions. So this is a getting ready for Halloween tag. My favorite time of the year. If you've seen any of my other tags, you probably know that already. I love Halloween, so this is going to be right up my alley. So, let's see, number one, would you ever go to a graveyard at night? Um, probably not, because if you have seen any of my tags before, you know that I am easily scared or at least startled. And the worst part is my own thoughts, my own imagination, that's my worst enemy and my greatest friend, go figure, my friend of me. Um, Cause like even leaving the house at night, if I'm by myself, I mean, it would happen with anybody, but if I'm, especially if I'm by myself and I'm walking to the truck to like say, go to the store or go pick something up. I'm imagining as I'm walking to the truck that there's like, you know, I have a infamous coyote problem. Um, I'm imagining them coming out and nipping at me or, or some rabid animal, bats. I mean, my imagination runs wild. So if it does that, just walking to my truck in my own house, a graveyard at night would not be the place for me. Not if I wanted to survive the night. Number two, in a zombie apocalypse, what is your weapon of choice? Well, I'd like anything that kept them. I, I like, I don't want to get up close and personal if I can help it, but I have played video games and I know I'm horrible at aiming and shooting grenades. Would grenade be a choice? That way I could throw a grenade and get a bunch of them or even one. I don't care if it's one but they wouldn't have to get close enough to me to have to deal with. I couldn't do a bow. I don't think I could do a gun. Not because I'm afraid of them. I just wouldn't be able to manage them. Um, or a car. That, would be, that could be a weapon, right? But I know you're meaning a weapon, weapon. Um... If a grenade is off the table, and I don't think it should be, but if it were, because that is a weapon, so I'm going with grenade. But if I had to pick something more standard, I'd probably go with whatever long sword I could use. And yes, I said sword. I get picked on for it all the time. Um, there's a W in there. I'm using it. Um, anyway, um, so I would use the longest sword I could. Anything that would not let them get too close. I don't want like a little knife that they have to get right here before I can do anything. So I'm going with grenade first. And I better have a big stockpile. Actually, that would be the problem with grenades as I'd run out. All right, I'll go with the long sword. End of story. I'll just have to work on my upper body strength and hopefully my muscles won't give out on me. Either as an adult or child, would you rather go trick or treating or go to a Halloween party? Hmm. I love them both. So. I mean, I loved going trick or treating because you got to go to different houses and new people would see your outfit all the time. 
But I think overall, I'd much prefer a party. Um, getting to mingle with people, finding out what they did for their costumes, how they came up with their costumes, because that's one of the big things. As I've mentioned previously, I do love Halloween. I've loved makeup. I've studied special effects makeup. I have done some pretty advanced makeup procedure. Actually, I'll throw, insert, I did a Joker and I made the permanent grin. Um, I had to cast my face and mold it. It was a big process. Um, but I'll insert a picture of that here. Um, just to show you how much I love Halloween, I get that into it. So I would like to have a party where I could talk to the other people. Like if somebody had a great costume or makeup, I could say, what did you do? How did you do this? So, okay, I, I will go with a party. You're in a horror film. Are you the first to die, the comic relief, the skeptic, the smart one, the survivor, or the killer? Um, if you've seen, again, I keep saying that, but in previous um, tags, I did mention I did mention if I were ever in a movie, I would want to be in a horror movie and I would want to be the killer. But that's as an actor. As the actual, if it were a real thing. Now, if, if you're, you're in a horror film, I'm assuming that means you're in that situation, not that you're acting in a horror film. I wouldn't want to be the killer in real life. Um, I'd like to think I'd be the smart one, but I would probably end up being the comic relief character. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the smart one as my first choice because I have watched a lot of those films. I've read a lot of those books. I think I would know, kind of like in the, in the movie series Scream, there are people who know about scary movies and what to do, what you know, not to do. So I think I would be the smart one. I might turn out to be the comic relief, but I think I'd be the smart one. Do you watch something happy after watching a horror film? That depends. If it's nighttime and I'm about to go to bed, yes, I do. If it's during the day, other things are going to happen after the, I've watched the film and it's not going to be an issue. But if it's very late at night and I'm going to go to bed, I have to do something to get my mind up. Even if it's a sad movie, the same thing, because otherwise I'll be laying there with thoughts going through my head. That's seldom a good thing for me, especially if I'm in bed, I mean. Um, while watching scary movies, are you the person who yells at the characters, the person who covers their eyes constantly, or the person who falls asleep? Really, none of them. I pretty much just watch. I, I never cover my eyes unless, no, that's not true. Okay. If it's something like I can't deal with bot, like even in like watching medical shows, I know the surgeries are fake, but I can't watch needles. I can't watch things in the eye. So I don't, cover my eyes then, but I do look away until I think it's safe. Um, but horror movies usually aren't, they're usually more fun type of thing. Although I watched the movie Hostel and that was one that I had a lot of difficulty with. I had to keep looking away. <sighs> but I also do talk like say oh this is 
this person's going to get killed because they're doing this or whatever, but I don't yell at them. Um, I guess I really do none of them, but I guess if it were something that made me really squeamish, like something like to do with the eyes or anything, I would look away, not cover my eyes, but I would look away. Um, but really, overall, I'm none of the above. Number seven, are you the one who gets scared or does the scaring? Again, I've mentioned this before, I am easily startled. If I'm doing dishes and I turn around and Paul had come, just come into the kitchen, I, I scream. Um, I'm easily startled and I do get scared, as I mentioned, walking to my truck. But I also used to love scaring people. I had, <laughs> I had my friend Cena, Nancy, I, her, I called her Nancina and then Cena, then Cena Marie. Um, we lived together for a while long ago and I used to torture her. I would like put snake, rubber snakes in the bathtub so that when she got in, cause she had bubble baths. So when she got in, she'd feel the snake on her feet and she'd scream, Roy, what did you do? And one time I put a tape recorder in the closet of her bedroom and I had left a wide quiet space <laughs> and then said, Nancy, Nancy, let me out of here. Let me out of here and things to that effect. So she went to bed and I went in to say goodnight to her, which wasn't typical, but um, so that I could turn on the tape recorder. And of course I left the room and there's this long silence and then suddenly she hears my voice sounding like it's coming from the closet. And she's like, what are you doing? What's going So I loved scaring people. So I guess I'd have to say I'm both, even though I easily get scared. I do enjoy, maybe it's more of a prank scare than a like jump out and scare people. So yeah, I would go with a bit of both. Number eight, name something you wouldn't want to run into in a forest or abandoned building. Wolf, forest, body in a building. Um, first of all, I do live in a wooded area. Hence my coyote problem. I don't want to run into anything in the woods. Um, I don't like, we had a badger one time living under our shed and I was afraid to go to the shed because I was afraid it was going to like come out. I don't like raccoons. Possums are like a horror story because they're like giant bloated rats. So I don't want to run into anything in the woods. That's why I don't go camping. That's why I don't go for nature walks. No thanks. If I do any walking, it's going to be on a track or someplace open. And there go the acorns. Um, as far as an abandoned building, um, well, I wouldn't want to run into like a serial killer in an abandoned building. I, when I was younger, I used to explore abandoned buildings. I thought they were fascinating. I was always looking for things to find. I remember there was an old railroad office by some tracks that were seldom used. And I got some friends of mine to go in there and we were snooping around and finding like little ledgers and things like that. I love that kind of stuff. And actually I have a book idea. I written very little of it, but I've had this idea for ages and it would start, I'd mentioned before naming my truck Hadley because of the town I wanted my horror story set in. Well, the first of the stories I had set in that town was a, where some young teenagers, four young teenagers, a girl and three boys, are playing like the scavenger hunt kind of thing like I used to do in abandoned buildings and they happen upon a vampire. And so, yeah, something like that, I would not want to find.
but I loved exploring old buildings. That was very long-winded, wasn't it? Um, number nine, what is the creepiest thing to ever happen to you? Now I have a story. I have always done like tarot cards, runes, psychic readings type of things. And so I had a Ouija board. Well, I was watching a movie that had something to do with the Ouija board. So I thought, oh, this will be fun. I was home by myself. I was living alone in a small apartment. So I thought, oh, well, I'll get out my Ouija board and play around with it. So I started playing around with it and it started to move. And I said, who are you? And it spelled out Z-A. And I said, Za, what kind of name is that? And it said, like, we are the beginning and the end. There is, there is no beginning and no end. So Z and A, the ends, like the ends of the alphabet looped. So it was like, anyway. So then it started going, you are mine, you are mine. And I said, no, I do not belong to anyone. And I took my hands off the Ouija board. And the television, which was still on, went pure static. And it sounded like screams coming from inside the static, from like underneath the static. I put the Ouija board away. The TV was back to normal. That was the weirdest thing, believe me or not, that has ever happened to me. So, top that, Ripley. Okay, and number 10. If someone dared you to spend the night in a haunted house for $100,000, would you? I guess that would depend on a couple of things. My likelihood is that I would say no, because you know my mind, I've already said, would ha be imagining all, all sorts of things. But is it like the neighborhood not haunted house where everyone just says it's haunted, but it's not actually? Or is it actually haunted? And what kind of haunting is it? Is it just benevolent spirits? Is it poltergeist material? What are we talking about here? So, $100,000. If it were a million, I'd probably say yes, depending on the type of haunting we're talking about. For 100000 Huh. Also, am I with anyone? Could I be, have a companion? But then I'd have to split the money. Um, I don't know. Um, I, th I know I'd want to. I know I'd want to for the experience. But I don't know if I could because my imagination would start already, even before I got to the house, start getting to me. Um, I'm going to have to wimp out on this question and say maybe. I think I would end up not doing it. But I would want to do it. So I'm going to have to go with maybe. Sorry, Sandy. I know that's a cop out of sorts, but it would really depend on the circumstances, like I said. So that is the end of this getting ready for Halloween tag. I am thankful to Sandy for coming up with these questions and always grateful to my friend Kim for tagging me over at a girl and her phone. So don't forget to check out their tags. They're linked below as well as others who do the tags and other WW content. So I hope you enjoyed this. Give me a thumbs up if you did like this tag. If you're a fan of Halloween, give me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and you're looking for recipes that can help you on a weight loss journey. Hit the notification bell for the next time I upload any sort of video and comment down below your responses to some of these questions. Would you spend the night in a haunted house for $100,000?
That is the question. I couldn't answer it. Can you? Um, you can also follow me over on social media. I have my Instagram right here, as well as two Facebook groups. One is mine, Recipes with Roy. The other one is Finding Our Way, W-E-I-G-H. And I share the admin duties with Jennifer Lynn from the Jennifer Lynn channel, as well as Brie Coleman from Balancing Life with Brie. So, I guess that wraps this tag up. So, oh, I did not tag anyone yet. Silly, silly boy. Um, of course, if you've been watching this, you know I am tagging Jen and Steve, Mr. and Mrs. Chaos, over at Embracing Chaos with Jen. Of course I'm tagging them. Who else would I tag? I can't believe I forgot to throw in my tag. Anyways, there my tag is done, and so am I. So until next time, bye.